Players who never won a World Series in their careers might be a somber topic, but the 10 I will discuss today did not need a championship ring to cement their legacies. The only specifications I have to make this list are that the player has to be retired. Players like Mike Trout and Shohei Otani will not be on this list, as both still have time to win a title before their respective careers are over. As always, if you enjoy, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Before the end of the year, I'm going to be doing a giveaway on my Instagram, so make sure to follow me at cam23 underscore yt and hit the bell to enable all notifications so you don't miss any future cam23 videos. Carl Yastrzemski's 1967 campaign was historically great. With a league-leading 326 average, 44 homers, and 121 RBIs, he won the Triple Crown. Miguel Cabrera in 2012 is the only player to replicate it since. Yaz also led the league in runs, hits, on-base percentage, slugging, OPS, OPS+, and total bases. The 12.4 war he posted ranks fourth among position players all time. The top three spots are all held by Babe Ruth. Carl later took home the American League MVP award. This same year, the Red Sox won the pennant and matched up with the Cardinals in the World Series. In Game 2, Yaz hit two homers and led Boston to a 5-0 victory. In Game 6, he tied the score in the fourth inning and the Sox were able to force a Game 7. Unfortunately, the offense was silent and they fell to the Cardinals in a seven-game series. Yaz was excellent, batting 400 with three homers and five RBIs. The only other World Series appearance of his career came in 1975. In the championship series, he batted 455 in 11 at-bats, and Boston played the Big Red Machine in the World Series. This contest required all seven games, two of which went to extras. In Game 7, the Reds narrowly won 4-3 to claim the title. For his career, Yastrzemski played 23 seasons and made 18 All-Star teams. He is ninth all-time in hits with 3,419. He was awarded seven gold gloves, won three batting titles, and became a Hall of Famer in 1989. Harmon Killebrew was an extremely successful power hitter during his 22-year career. He led the league in home runs six times, three of which came in consecutive years from 1962 to 1964. In that span, he averaged 47 dingers and 111 RBIs a season. In 1965, Killebrew received his one and only chance to win a title. The Twins won the pennant and the Dodgers were their opponent in the Fall Classic. With Sandy Koufax, Don Drysdale, and Claude Osteen in LA's pitching staff, it would make for a compelling series. Recently, I made a video on Sandy Koufax that covers his contributions more in depth. The Twins took the first two games, but the Dodgers answered back with three straight wins to take a 3-2 lead. Minnesota evened the series in Game 6, but unfortunately were shut out in Game 7 by the MVP, Sandy Koufax. Killebrew was productive in his lone World Series appearance with a 286 average and a homer. 1969 was Harmon's greatest season, with 49 homers, 140 RBIs, and winning the American League MVP award. Unfortunately, the Twins would fall in the ALCS to the Orioles in both 1969 and 1970. For his career, Killebrew mashed 573 dingers and was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1984. Rod Carew was Killebrew's teammate for eight seasons. However, Carew never made it to the World Series. In 19 seasons, 12 with the Twins and seven with the Angels, he played in four postseasons. In 1969, Carew won the batting title with a 332 average. As we already mentioned, the Orioles took down the Twins in the 69 and 70 seasons. From 1972 to 1975, Carew took home four consecutive batting titles. He received no playoff at bats during the span. 1977 was was his finest season. Crew led the league in average, runs, hits, triples, intentional walks, on-base percentage, OPS, and OPS+. He took home the American League MVP award and made a bid to become the first player to bat 400 since Ted Williams in 1941. With the Angels in 1979, Crew would play in the championship series, but as luck would have it, Baltimore was once again responsible for ending his season. Rod batted 412 in the ALCS, the best postseason performance of his career. In 1982, the Angels played the Brewers in the ALCS, but fell in five games. This was Carew's final October appearance. Rod Carew has an impressive resume. He was an 18-time All-Star, won seven batting titles, was named Rookie of the Year, and won the 1977 MVP award. In 1991, he was elected to Cooperstown. Ty Cobb played 24 MLB seasons, 22 with the Tigers, and two with the Philadelphia Athletics. 
He has the most batting titles of any player in baseball history, with 12 and won 9 of those in consecutive seasons from 1907 to 1915. In that stretch, he batted 376 and averaged 198 hits in 140 games. He made three consecutive World Series appearances from 1907 to 1909. In the 1907 matchup against the Cubs, Detroit failed to win a single game. The two clubs had a rematch in 1908, resulting in a similarly disappointing outcome for the Tigers. While Detroit won Game 3, the Cubs pitching and timely hitting allowed them to repeat as champions. The 1909 World Series consisted of a Tigers-Pirates matchup, and it proved to be a more competitive contest. In the decisive Game 7, Pittsburgh shut out Detroit 8 to nothing. The Tigers lost three consecutive World Series, and Ty Cobb never made it back in his remaining 19 seasons. Cobb ranks atop several of the all-time leaderboards, including 9th in RBIs, 6th in War, 4th in doubles, 4th in stolen bases, 2nd in runs scored, and 2nd in hits. His career 366 average is an MLB record. In 1936, Ty Cobb was inducted to Cooperstown in baseball's first ever Hall of Fame class. Ted Williams is a hitting legend. His eye at the plate, elite bat to ball skills, and prodigious power made him a special slugger. In 1941, he had possibly his greatest season. In 143 games, Williams batted 406, hit 37 homers, and drove in 120. He led the league in runs, homers, walks, average, on-base percentage, slugging, OPS, OPS+, and intentional walks. He became the last player to hit 400, something we may never see again. He finished runner-up to Joe DiMaggio in MVP voting. Williams played 17 full seasons, but only made it to the World Series once. In 1946, the Red Sox and Cardinals matched up and played a thrilling series. Sadly, Ted and the Sox were on the losing end, falling in seven games. From 1946 to 1949, Williams batted 349. He averaged 34 homers and 131 RBIs a year, winning two MVP awards. In the other two seasons, he finished runner-up in 1947 and third in 1948. Ted Williams lost nearly five full seasons due to serving in the military, yet he was able to hit 521 homers, drive in 1,839 runs, and compile 2,654 hits. He set an MLB record for career on-base percentage at 482. In 1966, he joined the Hall of Fame. Tony Gwynn was a San Diego lifer. He played 20 years, all with the Padres, and earned the nickname Mr. Padre. Gwynn had a remarkable ability to find areas of the field without defenders. He walked significantly more than he struck out and was a force on the base paths in his younger years. His first postseason opportunity came in 1984. Gwynn batted 368 in the NLCS against the Cubs, and the Padres advanced. Unfortunately, they ran into the Tigers, who won the World Series in five games. From 1994 to 1997, Gwynn won four consecutive batting titles. He batted 371 in the span and made a push for a 400 average in 1994. The player strike stole the latter portion of this season, but he finished with an astonishing 394 average. In 1996, the Padres were swept by the Cardinals in the division series. In 1998, they made their second trip to the World Series with Gwynn, and he did not disappoint. With a homer and a 500 average, he did everything possible to beat the Yankees Yankees in the Fall Classic. Sadly, it did not come to fruition as they were swept in four straight. Gwynn led the league in hits seven times and won eight batting titles, tied with Honus Wagner for second all-time. In 2007, Tony was elected to the Hall of Fame. Ernie Banks played 19 seasons in Chicago and was referred to as Mr. Cub. He was an incredibly durable player. From 1954 to 1960, Ernie averaged 153 games back when MLB only played 154 games. In that span, he batted 292 with an average of 38 homers and 110 RBIs a year. 1958 to 1959 was his two-year peak. In 58, he led the league in homers and RBIs with 47 and 129 respectively. In 59, he led the league with a 10.2 war and drove in a league-leading 143 runs. In both seasons, he was named the National League MVP, becoming one of just 13 players ever to win back-to-back -back awards. Unfortunately, the Cubs had a 500 record just six times in Ernie's career, and he never made a postseason appearance. Ernie Banks made 14 All-Star teams, won a gold glove, and hit 512 homers. He was elected to Cooperstown in 1977. 
Ichiro Suzuki's NPB and MLB career is truly remarkable. I covered him in last week's video, so if you're interested in learning more about him, make sure to check it out if you haven't already. Ichiro played 19 years in MLB, joined the 3000 Hits Club, and played until he was 45 years old. 2001 was his rookie season and he took the league by storm, winning both Rookie of the Year and MVP honors. Fred Lynn is the only other player to do so. This same year, the Mariners tied the 1906 Chicago Cubs for the most wins in a single season all time with 116. Ichiro batted 600 in the ALDS against the Indians, and Seattle advanced. In the ALCS, they faced the Yankees, but unfortunately fell in five games. 11 years later, Ichiro finally made it back to the postseason. This time, he suited up for the Yankees. New York took down the Orioles in five games, but were swept by the Tigers in the championship series. Unfortunately, this was Ichiro's final time playing October baseball. Ichiro made the Mariners Hall of Fame in 2022 and will surely be elected to the Hall of Fame once eligible in 2025. Barry Bonds played 22 seasons and made seven postseason appearances, more than any other player on this list. With the Pirates from 1990 to 1992, he batted 301 and averaged 31 homers, 111 RBIs, and 45 stolen bases a year. He was named MVP twice and finished runner-up in 1991. Additionally, he won Gold Glove and Silver Slugger awards each year. The Pirates achieved three division titles in this time frame, but made a first round exit on every occasion. In 1997, Bonds made it back to the postseason with the Giants, but they lost to the eventual World Series winning Marlins. In 2000, the Giants played the Mets in the division series, but once again, Bonds was not able to make it past the first round. 2002 was a different story. In the midst of winning four consecutive MVP awards, Barry was at his peak. San Francisco took down the Braves in the NLDS and the Cardinals in the NLCS to face the Angels in the World Series. Bonds was excellent with three homers in the Division Series and six RBIs in the Championship Series. The Angels-Giants matchup did not disappoint. In the end, the Angels were victorious and claimed their first title in franchise history. In the most important series of his life, Bonds batted an astounding 471 in seven games, with four homers, six RBIs, and 13 walks. Barry's dinger in Game 2 traveled an estimated 485 feet. His on-base percentage, slugging, and OPS are the highest by any player in their World Series career. In 2003, the Giants fell to the eventual champion Marlins for the second time, marking his last postseason appearance. For Barry's career, he made 14 All-Star teams, won 12 Silver Sluggers, 8 Gold Gloves, 7 MVP awards, and 2 batting titles. Bonds is 4th on the all-time war leaderboard and hit 762 home runs. Ken Griffey Jr. is an all-time great five-tool player. He had a sweet swing and made difficult plays look easy in the outfield. His first chance in the playoffs came in 1995. Facing the Yankees, Seattle went down 0-2 to start the division series, but responded by winning three straight. Griffey Jr. and Edgar Martinez led the charge in completing this remarkable comeback. Jr.'s five homers, nine runs scored, and 24 total bases in a single ALDS set an MLB record. Unfortunately, in the ALCS against the Indians, the Mariners fell in six games. Injury stole a portion of the kid's career, but he posted video game numbers. From 1996 to 1999, he batted 294. He averaged 52 homers, 142 RBIs, and 19 stolen bases. He won both the Gold Glove and Silver Slugger awards every year in this span and was named MVP in 1997. This same year, the Mariners had a short stay in the playoffs as the Orioles won the ALDS in four games. Griffey Jr.'s last postseason appearance was brief. With the White Sox in 2008, they lost to the Rays. For his career, Jr. hit 630 homers, which ranks him seventh all time. He made 13 All-Star teams, won 10 gold gloves, and seven silver sluggers. In 2016, he was nearly a unanimous selection to the Hall of Fame. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts in the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.